how do you downshift quickly? Let's say you're about to engage in something, you're feeling like you're just too sympathetically aroused, meaning you're just too alert. Well, there's a very simple tool that's based on a, a really about 70 years of physiology, but I, I like to think that we've unearthed this for people recently, which is to do a double inhale, long exhale. It's called a physiological sigh. And the best way to do this would be to inhale deeply through your nose until you can't inhale anymore. And then take one more little inhale, a little sharp inhale, just try and sneak a little bit more air through your nose and then exhale all the way. I'll demonstrate it and then I'll explain how it works. So it's... Okay. So you really have to breathe right out. Yes, you want to breathe it all, all out. So first of all, some basics of breathing and how it relates to heart rate. For reasons that I won't go into right now, uh, when you inhale, your heart rate tends to speed up a little bit. When you exhale, your heart rate slows down. This has to do with the movement of the diaphragm, how much space is in the thoracic cavity, and a signal from the brain. The physicians and others will know this as respiratory sinus arrhythmia. There are also other ways that your heart rate can speed up and slow down, of course. But in, when you inhale, your heart rate speeds up a little bit more. When you exhale, it slows down a little bit more. Now, your lungs are incredible because they're these two big sacks of, of air. You bring in air down through the trachea, it goes to the lungs, and then that oxygen actually moves directly into the bloodstream. And then when, and so an inhale is an active process of bringing oxygen in, and then an exhale is a, generally a passive process. It, it can be done actively, but it's a passive process. And the exhale is where you offload carbon dioxide. And that ratio of, of oxygen and carbon dioxide is, is absolutely crucial. It's not that oxygen is good and carbon dioxide is bad. It's the, it's the ratio that's important. In general, in humans, our, the amount of oxygen in our bloodstream and brain is pretty constant. It varies, but under healthy conditions, it's pretty constant. But the amount of carbon dioxide varies tremendously. When you're holding your breath or when you get stressed, when you're too anxious or too alert, levels of carbon dioxide typically are higher than you want them to be. When you do this double inhale, something special happens. Your the lungs inflate, but your lungs are not just two big bags of air. They have hundreds of millions of little tiny sacs called avioli of the lungs, and they have fluid on the inside. And when you get stressed or when you haven't breathed enough, those little sacs collapse, they deflate, but because they have fluid on the inside and there's surface tension, it's like trying to pull apart a balloon that has fluid in the middle. It won't open very easily. So you need a big inhale and that second little sneaky inhale at the end. Pop them open. Pops them open and then you can offload the carbon dioxide. You do this subconsciously about once every five minutes. You don't necessarily do the, the double inhale, but you take a big deep about once every five minutes and you even do it in sleep. And and you, so is that your your nervous system noticing that those, uh, what, what did you call them again? The avioli. Avioli. That yeah. Sounds like a ravioli. Yeah. They're, 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 they're closed over and that you need to fill them back up. Yes. Uh, the way that your nervous system creates the trigger to do a physiological sigh or to breathe at all is by the buildup of carbon dioxide in the bloodstream. And you have some carbon dioxide sensing neurons in the brainstem. Uh, Jack Feldman at UCLA is the world expert on this. He discovered the two brain areas responsible for breathing, pre Singer complex, prefacial nucleus, if people want to look those up. And he, and has done a lot of important work on physiological size, um, more than me, uh, to be quite quite honest. Uh, Jack's really the, the, the heavy hitter there. So I think that when you, when you do a physiological size spontaneously, it's because carbon dioxide was building up. There's this um, email apnea, they used to call it, when people are emailing, they're holding their breath and then they go, mm, I'm guilty of that. We all sure. are. We all are. One of the great, so you can use physiological size to rapidly decompress. Just one to three of those, double inhale, exhale, double inhale, exhale, double inhale, exhale, and you will be calm. It's the, it's the fastest way that I'm aware of to calm down. Is that good if you're tr having trouble falling asleep and you have a thousand things running through your mind? Yeah, so I would say for the ability to fall asleep, you need um, to calm your nervous system. So I would do a few of those. And then if you have trouble turning off thoughts, which is a complicated thing, as you know, I suggest using, there's a zero cost app that was developed for Apple and Android by my colleague at Stanford, Dr. David Spiegel. I say Dr. David Spiegel, because he is indeed a medical doctor. He's our associate chair of psychiatry. And what uh, the Spiegel lab has developed is this app called Reverie, R-E-V-E-R-I. Reverie.com has a, a self-hypnosis script that's been shown in clinical studies and a number of mechanistic studies that will allow people to 
turn off thinking and transition into sleep more easily. So you could use it if you're having trouble falling asleep, but best to use it once or two or three times a week um, to get better at decompressing. And you just can get better at sleeping through self-hypnosis. And there are neural mechanisms for this, learning to turn off some of the areas of the cortex involved in planning and action. So that's, um, but I think for most people, the physiological sides are a great way to say, okay, you know, I'm feeling overstimulated. I just, I want to calm down. <sighs> is the best way to just bring everything down a notch.